Oh, hi, Pat. This is Tracy. Hi, um, Tracy. I'm uh, glad to have finally met you in person. You know, Texas is really beautiful getting in, out of uh, the Northeast, especially. <laughs> well, I know how the winter's been for you guys. I'm uh, Pretty so rough. I'm not jealous. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and then I um, actually just had dinner at Texas Roadhouse. So uh, okay. do you supply there? Yeah, we do, as a matter of fact. Yeah, you yeah. know what? I can tell, because that steak was really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, so um, what we do at Vector Marketing is partner with businesses who meet our values of high quality and dedication to their customers. So today I wanted to just um, tell you about a little bit about what we can offer to you and then see if uh, maybe you would be interested in partnering with us. So. Um, does that some, sound like something we can kind of squeeze into these next 12 minutes? Yeah. All okay. right. Awesome. So, um, I mean, obviously, you know how the economy's been. It's been um, affecting your business in or your industry, rather, mm -hmm. in a rather negative way. Um, but I feel like um, we can turn that around for you just because uh, I want to know, actually, first, what your goals are as far as your um, profit growth over the next, like, what would well, could you give me yeah. a nice picture of that? Yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, we we formed as a company in 2008, and the, the plan from that point on was to just consistent growth. And obviously, the the way the economy is, has been, and with the drought and the oil crisis, I mean, that's affected our plans for growth. Okay. Uh, so we had a cut down on our plans. So right now, for the next year, for 2015, uh, we're hoping to increase profitability by 10 percent, which is modest, as you know, compared to our, you know. Um, previous projections, but okay. that's where we're at right Modest now. why? Because when we formed as a company, our plan was to just, you know, consistent 20% growth, 50% growth um, right. in, in our projection. But with the way everything's turned out and with the way the industry is You're right just now, trying to be realistic We're trying to be that realistic. Situation. Yes, exactly. Okay, great. So then, um, can I get your perspective on what you perceive your competitors to be doing in this uh, situation? Yes, yeah, so... You know, as you know, the beef price has been rising. Um, now, our company is trying to keep our prices the way they are. We believe that we're a high value product and we don't want to adjust our prices and lean into our profitability or even offer less value in what we, what exactly. we provide. Um, what we've noticed is that a lot of competitors are doing anything they can to cut costs, whether that's affecting the quality of their foods, um, whether that's offering discounts that really aren't you know, possible to maintain. Uh, but that's what they're doing. They're undercutting costs, and they're getting customers that way, taking them from us and some of our other competitors as well. Um, you, the, the main process I've seen is cutting costs and, okay. and offering low prices. So that's something that you have totally avoided. We're we're trying to. We're doing everything we can to avoid it. Um, you know, obviously competitors right now are more likely to leave because of the fact that they're getting you know hit very hard by the prices as well. So sometimes loyalty isn't as uh, important in these kinds of conditions as they would be regularly. Okay. Uh, anything we can do to avoid it, we will. But at some point, if there's no other option, we will pursue that. Right. So then, as VP of Marketing, can you paint a picture for me as to what you've done in the past and maybe what has worked and what hasn't? Yeah, what we've done in the past, I mean, anything from TV, not TV advertising, print adver advertisement for um, publications that go directly to the restaurants. Um, and then, you know, just word of mouth from referrals. That's mainly what we do. Um, but in terms of marketing campaigns, we're, we're trying to do something new. But right yeah. now, we're, what, we, what we have been doing isn't necessarily working right now. So we're trying to think of any and all things that we could do to change it up a little bit. And the word of mouth, how, how much of a percentage yield you would say um, you get from just customer referrals? Because you did mention how there is that loyalty issue mm -hmm. now. Um, that you might not be able to capitalize so much on that anymore. You, you said the yield from word of mouth, like who, who we get from our Yeah, girls. can you give uh, me an approximate? Yeah, I'd say like at least you know thirty percent of our customers were you know came to us because they heard about us from uh, you know another company in the industry or whoever it might be. Okay. Yeah, you know, we get that a lot. All right. So um, then I guess uh, one of my last questions would be just uh, what. What does the customer, what kind of value does that have for you and your company? What, what would you estimate each customer um, bringing in profit uh, on a yearly basis? I'd say, you know, in, in revenue, it would be around like 15 on, as an average. You know, our profit margin is, you know, let's say 
thirty percent of that. Um, okay, fifteen thousand. Yeah, about around fifteen thousand. We have some really big ones, and then we have some really small ones. But the average would probably be around fifteen. Okay, all right. So, um, have you ever heard of Cutco? I have uh, very minimally. I know you sell knives, but I don't know much besides that. We don't just sell knives. We sell the best knives in the industry. <laughs> They're world class and. What I was thinking maybe for you is that you offer these as an incentive to keep your customers buying because in this kind of situation, uh, you make 30% of your revenue from your customer's loyalty. And what we think that would be um, something that really hooks onto your customers is that you give them a, a set of our cut code knives to really demonstrate that, that you care about the customer and that there is a high standard of quality between your product and their service that you want to maintain that relationship. So have you ever heard of someone doing something like that in your industry? Not with knives. I know a lot of people that give away smaller smaller gifts, whether it be like a, smaller a gifts. clock or pens or whatever it is, but not, okay. with not with knives. Have you considered the smaller gifts in the past? We have, but we were never really that into the idea of it. We didn't see the value that a pen would provide. Yeah, exactly. It's not industry that. relevant, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, but how relevant would a knife be to a chef who's slicing through your tender, your tender cuts and the best, like top shelf meats that you have? It definitely makes more sense um, from my standpoint than the other things that we mentioned. Uh, you know, it, it'll be more, a little bit more relevant to them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's how I see it. Um, so then just playing with that idea, I want to see what um, any kind of doubts you might have on that. I think the strategy would be useful. Um, yeah, I know you mentioned that you're the highest quality knives. I just want to, is there anything about your knife in particular that makes it world class or the best in the industry? Yes, we have a forever guarantee. It's not a lifetime guarantee, it's forever. So basically, when you buy these knives, you give them to your customers and not, and your customers don't come back to you with the knife and say, I want, you know, to bank on this warranty. You're going to say, actually, uh, it's guaranteed and you can go through the company. So that relieves you of the burden of having to follow up with the, the product specifically and focus on what you do best, which is selling them the meats. And they can go to the company and get the blades sharpened. They can get repairs whenever they need to. And it's as long as the life of that knife. So if you have a restaurant with a lot of turnover, then it's not going to be, the blame isn't going to fall on that uh, staff. It's going to be a set that you have gifted to that company that they will find a return on their investment continually for as long as they use those knives. Okay, so if they have any problem with it, if it breaks or if you need sharpening, it is not your problem. Whatever it is, they contact Cutco directly and yes. I don't have to answer any phone calls. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's good to hear. It's better than, you know, a pen that runs out of ink. Exactly. <laughs> it doesn't last too long. No. Okay. Uh, um, now, what, like, physically about the knife? I'm a little curious about, you know, is there anything about it that maybe will differentiate it from the other knives that the chefs are currently using? Yeah, well, like I said, it's world class, and it's world class for a reason. It's uh, actually got a full tang, so if you take a look here, actually, I brought you some specs where um, the blade 